I have wrote my personal story in a chapter uh, for a book series called Mental Health for Millennials. And I told my personal story from being bullied at school. And it, this just happened from my transition from primary to secondary school. Within three weeks, I was bullied. I, I didn't have breathing space. I was in a whole new school. It was a brand new building. I only had a handful of friends from primary school join with me uh, in this new school. And it was such a harrowing time. It was unreal. And I would never say anything to anybody for the simple reason I didn't want to bother anyone. I didn't want to be a burden to anyone more so. That was kind of my philosophy. And I thought if I just say nothing, it'll eventually go away. But it didn't. During a lunch break one particular day, I basically was on the phone and out of nowhere, uh, two guys came up behind me and pushed me against a wall, took my phone off me and flung it across a greenery area where I was on the school grounds. And I just remember being paralyzed with fear. I, all of a sudden there was hands around my throat. Whatever they could throw at me was thrown at me. And the, the context was, is I just wanted to get out of that situation. But I, I just was stunned and in shock and I was shaken. Uh, I experienced all this in the matter of what felt like a half an hour, but it was only minutes. So I, I eventually went back in after a few days off school and this was going into my third week. I was making my way to class. On every floor, you have a set of double doors that makes you go down to the school hall of classes and it basically people would congregate there you know there was there was all sorts of kids from all different years these particular guys that were hassling me over the first two weeks decided to stand at this door when i was on my way to class and just start pushing and shoving me as i was trying to make my way through these doors they were calling me faggot book teeth these names were a recurring thing i in that particular few moments i was pushed against the wall the polo shirt and jumper was pulled up over my head where I was pushed down the flight of stairs that I had just come up and I was just in complete fear as I, I remember all my body hitting each step and I could feel it so much so it was it was just unreal to think that this has happened. Kind of re recovered myself the best I could and got up and then I had noticed on my forearm from from just say, just above my elbow to my wrist just, to, just under my wrist, that there was blood pumping out of it. So I had obviously cut my arm on something and reefed it open on the journey down from being pushed down. And I, I just thought, oh, I need to get help, do you know? And I just went, made, made my way straight to the school office. And when I got to the school office, luckily there was a nurse there ready to help. Um, she bandaged me up and she was asking her what had happened, of course. And again, I covered it up. I basically had said to the school nurse and the, the, the person in the office, which was the school secretary, that I just tripped down the stairs, I lost my balance. I had all this going around in my head. And then on top of being bullied and trying to like say nothing and cover it all up and trying to improv excuses as quick and as fast as I could. No teenager needs to do this, no matter what age. And the only action that was taken was the, the, the people I could point out because uh, that was the case of the matter got detention for two or three days and I think they got expulsion for two or three days so um, it was basically only a few days punishment which to me at the time felt good but it wasn't enough and I could do nothing about it because it wasn't my say so but I was living with the long-term trauma and this was sleepless nights, this was wet in the bed, this was just reliving the PTSD of each day or thinking of other scenarios that was going to happen should I go back to school. So like you can imagine a 12, 13 year old kid going through all this, trying to relive all this and get through what they can. This was me and th this was the horrendous part of it all. But I went back, I, I couldn't go back to school so all this was kind of coming into play and I was introduced to my GP to a youth advocacy service called Galway City Partnership and they explained to me uh, that this person will come out and talk to you, it's going to be a one-to-one, -one. you don't have to worry about anything, 
these these guys are easy going you just talk to them you tell them what you like what you're good at what you want to do in life possibly if you have any life goals like a dream job they'll work with you so i said yeah i said you know what yeah put me down for this um but even in the run up to say to who i now know john o'donnell calling out to me i didn't know what way this was going to go you know if he had a bad day and my first impression I was going to be, no, you know, this service isn't for me because there was other services that were recommended at the same time. And these services, you know, the, the, there was other things around the city and they were trying to get, kind of get me into group scenarios. And I kept explaining that the group scenarios wasn't going to be the thing because it took a long time to recover. It was even a few years after I, I had met John where I could get fully back into being outgoing and getting back into the swing of thing of groups and big settings and stuff. But true but true that John came out and we chatted and it was great because it was like a a big brother little brother scenario. You know, he'd ask questions, I would tell him the hobbies, I'd tell him what I'm interested in. Comedian Paul O'Grady was big on TV. He had a chat show with this and that. So I made a, a fan site of of him and through making this fan, fan site, I learned a lot. And that was kind of my goal. It was never really about what the site was about. It was just the fact that I could do it. It was public, I could interact with people, you know, easy enough through just basically emails and messaging. So I, I thought this would be great and meet new people too. So I was kind of thinking that was a plus. And it got me kind of invested into doing stuff like that. And it kind of got me, it kind of kept pushing me to do other stuff. and. I don't know if he knew this, but it was, it kept me distracted from my everyday life that I was doing. Do you know, yes, I was getting up, I was going out with my parents, I was doing stuff, but the, every meeting that I was having with John, I was starting to look forward to meeting him because I wanted to know what we could do. You know, I was making key rings, I was doing all sorts of um, little bits and pieces that I could do at home and, and kind of just do for the fan club. I'd never sell them or anything, I'd just give them to people on the fan club. And that was, that was a great thing. It was just kind of getting behind something and just distract that distraction. So we could put, so when I even came to making my CV that I could put down that I was good at communication through websites. I was, I, I could work social media. And these were skills that I just took for granted that, you know, everyone could do. But John saw that as a big plus. I I'm started off my career in broadcasting a few years ago. I'm working on Flirt FM here in Galway on NUIG campus and it's just an absolute ball. I get to interview for people from all walks of life and it's just unreal. So whether you're a comedian, an actor, a singer, songwriter, to even just a musician, I love to chat to you because that's, that's the key thing that I love to do and incorporate it into the show. That's where I am today and I hope to further my career in broadcasting. So what would you say to people who are experiencing bullying? To be honest, I know what you're going through and it's a tough, tough time. And all I can do is say, slowly come to terms with talking to someone about it. Whether you be talking to a parent, a teacher, a doctor, any service that's out there, I eventually started talking to the services from the GP upwards and the teachers, my parents, my brothers, any siblings that you have at home, whoever you trust, even if it's an older friend, whoever you think is there that, that will listen, that is the key thing to do. I know it's not easy to kind of come out and say it and speak up. You're going to, you're going to feel anxious, you're going to feel all sorts, you're going to have thoughts going through your head, but that's the start of getting through it.